Y'all pray for them. We're going to sing a couple songs, or at least Gabby's going to sing a couple. And uh, y'all pray for them while they sing, and then we're going to jump into the Bible, all right?
Yes, sir. What a Savior. Man, what a Savior we serve. Mm -hmm. What a God we serve. <laughs> He's always faithful. He's more than able. So. Amen. I'm so thankful for that this morning. Joshua chapter number two is where we'll be. Joshua chapter number two. In Joshua chapter number two this morning is where we'll take our text from. We'll be uh, speaking of something very familiar this morning and a very familiar uh, uh, lady, if you will, if you know much about your Bible. Whenever I say Joshua chapter two, we begin thinking. As who in the world could possibly be talking about in, in chapter number two of Joshua, when you get there, I promise you, you'll know exactly where we're at and what we're talking about there. And I want to look this morning at this lady. And I want to look at these verses and uh, prayerfully take from uh, the Bible this morning something that can help us, something that can guide us along our, our way. So when you find your place there in Joshua chapter number two, we'll begin reading in verse one. Let's stand together all who can and will. Uh, if you are able to this morning, if you would stand as we honor the reading of God's word, uh, Joshua chapter number two and verse number one. The Bible says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. Look in verse 4. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men uh, unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, and the men went out. Whether the men went out, I won't not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Listen to what she said. Go get them. They went that way. Go get them. Right? Verse 6 says, But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way of Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone, they shut the gate. You can be seated this morning. We're going to stop our reading right there for sake of time. I want to take these verses here today and look at this lady that we, we've all heard messages about in the past. A lady that we all uh, understand who she is. A lady whose name, honestly, every time you hear her name, it's typically followed by a moniker of, of, of what she is and what she was and, and uh, things of that nature of her old life. Here in these verses, we've seen this lady by the name of Rahab. Most of us in this room today, when we hear the name Rahab, we think harlot, right? That's, that's lived with her ever since. You, you don't hear Rahab, the, the lady who saved the two spies. You don't hear Rahab, the great-grandmother of David. You don't hear Rahab, the lady who's in the lineage of Christ. You hear Rahab, the harlot. So it's something that has stuck with her. It's unfortunate throughout all of the good that Rahab did and uh, these spies and all the lives that were saved. And like I said, even in the lineage of Christ, that most of us still refer to her as such of being Rahab the harlot. Now, my message today isn't along the lines of her name nor her reputation. These are things that once you get bad of, whether it's a bad name or a bad reputation, they're hard to get rid of. But I know one that can Amen. The world may remember what you were, but I can promise you this morning, my God says He chooses to remember it no more. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful this morning that I have a God that not only is willing, but is able to forgive me no matter where I've been, no matter what I've done, no matter all these things that we look in our past and say, God can never save me because of this. Look at a lady here in the lineage of Christ. The great grandmother of the great David, King David, who is after God's own heart, right. we, we find this lady here a harlot that God was able to use. So 
So let me say this this morning. We could, man, I could talk about Rahab. We could talk about Paul. We could talk about any of the apostles. We could talk about all of them this morning and say, well, God can't use me because you ain't never leveled up like Paul did. <laughs> Amen. Don't tell me this morning, well, Pastor, you don't know where I've been. Can I just tell you bluntly, as I've told you many times before, I don't care. I don't. I don't care what you've done in your past. I don't care that you've lied about this, lied about that. I don't care that you've cursed God. That's between you and Him. What I do care about is you saying, I can't because. I can tell you this morning, you can because. Amen. You can this morning be born again. You can this morning serve God. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what man may say. I'm telling you this morning, God still can. Amen. I want to focus this morning on how God can overcome anything. I want to look this morning at how to move from shame to faith. Would you agree with me this morning that the lifestyle of Rahab was something that would put her on the wall of shame? Amen. But we all know in Hebrews 11, the hall of faith, where she moved to. Amen. We're going to talk for a few minutes this morning and see how sin can bring shame in the life of people. It's without a doubt something that causes us to look differently on people, does it not? It makes us look differently on people, even those people uh, to reflect differently on themselves from time to time. Sin is the avenue that Satan uses to separate us from Christ. Absolutely. Right? Sin is the tool to prevent us fellowship with the Lord. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Amen. Why? Why do we know that, Pastor? Because we understand that God heareth not sinners. How do we fellowship with the Lord? Through His Word, through our prayer time, right? That's how we fellowship with God. So we understand this morning that Satan uses it as a tool. Satan uses it as an avenue to separate us from the Lord. When is it the hardest time to pray or have joy in your Christian life? When you've got unconfessed sin, right? When you're living in sin, when you've got something going on in your life, and you say, Pastor, I thought you was preaching to the lost this morning. I'm hitting everybody this morning. Amen. We all need it, Brother Peter. Amen. We all need it. Your pastor included. That's why I'm preaching it. Amen. It's the hardest when you know that you've sinned against God. I want to use this lady Rahab here in these verses to learn just a little bit of how we can move from shame to faith, just as she did. Let's take a few moments this morning. Let's pray. Ask God to help us in the mess. Brother Mike Brown, how about you pray for us, please? Lord, Father, we just once again have to say thank you. Uh, Lord, we just want to thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for this Yes, Lord. This message that we uh, the Lord, that you just speak to each one of us. Lord, help us to be receptive to what you say. Give me wisdom, Lord. Help us. Amen, amen. We have all felt the shame that comes along with sin, have we not? We've all we've all faced the 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 times in our lives to where we we know we've sinned. We're not quite ready to deal with it yet, so we go before the Lord and we don't want to talk about it. Y'all y'all do know He knows already before we go in there, right? And uh, so whenever we're avoiding our prayer time, avoiding reading the Bible, He knows already. We might as well just go ahead and get right about it and, and get all straightened up, right? But we understand the sin that comes in our lives that separates us and causes shame. Whether it's a disconnection from friends, whether it's a disconnection from family, especially the disconnection of fellowship with God, we have to understand this morning that we have to deal with those things. This lady that we'll be discussing today was a lady that her reputation still precedes her today. Though people may not be able to ever forget, Brother Matt, what I was before Jesus saved me. What I was before I came to Christ. Though people may never forget, it's so it, 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 it's almost humorous that when we go back to North Carolina and we run into somebody, they say, I heard you're pastoring in Maine. I'm like, yes, I'm pastoring a church in Maine. They're like, how? <laughs> They're like, that ain't the, that ain't the, people watch us online and I'll, I'll get messages, man, that ain't the same bow I knew in high school. 
I said, yeah, praise the Lord for that, right? Amen. If I was the same boat, y'all wouldn't want to know me. Amen. Wasn't always the sweetest fella in the world. And y'all say, he ain't real sweet now. <laughs> but that's okay. But no, seriously, it, it, God can make a change, Brother yes, Reggie, sir. in your life Amen. that is noticeable. That is very noticeable. And, and so I thank God for that uh, this, this, this morning. People, like I said, may never, may never see you as being a Christian because they remember what you were. Uh, but we have to live a lifestyle in front of them so they have no choice but to recognize it. Anyway, man was made to fellowship with God. Just as a tree was made for the soil, just as much as a fish for the sea, bird of the air, mankind was made to find life and find fellowship with the Creator. Sin removes us from that fellowship. Listen, you, Adam and Eve were created in the garden to fellowship and walk with the Lord. Amen. We can go all the way back to Genesis and we can talk about it. Adam used to walk with the Lord in the cool of the day. Right? They wrote songs about it. In the garden. But he used to walk with the Lord. But then what happened? Sin entered into their life. So that sin had to be dealt with. Sin brings... Death. Spiritual death to people. Ephesians 2 1 is written to Christians. It says, You once you were once dead in trespasses and sin. I'm so thankful that I once was in trespasses and sin. Once was dead. But sin brings death because the Bible tells in Romans 6 23, for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The payment for your sin is death. For a person to be put back in the right relationship with God, it takes a it's a radical work and it's necessary. Yeah. Amen. In fact, it's a miracle, if you will. No mere amount of good deeds will do it. Brother Michael Swope, no amount of good words will do it. No amount of, well, I I I I I'm a believer. Won't do it. Can I get a witness right there? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, I believe so do the demons. That's right. Stay on. Amen. I've had so many people tell me, oh, well, oh, so and so over there. Oh, they're a believer. Really? I wouldn't say that out loud. Yeah. Right? Don't tell any lost people they're a believer because I don't want them to judge us by that. Right. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, well, you just believe if you don't go, don't go to your church, then they ain't a believer. Nope. That, y'all ain't never heard me preach that. Y'all ain't never heard me say that. Trust me, I think there's a whole lot of people in other churches a whole lot better than y'all. <laughs> Wake up, everybody. We're all right. It's okay. It's all right. Good morning. Before a person be put back, it, it takes that. To be quite honest, a dead man can't do good deeds. What do you mean by that? Well, my righteousness is as filthy rags, the Bible says. So I can't do good works, Miss Cat, as a lost man. If I was a lost man, there's nothing, there's nothing good. All the good that comes out of Pastor Bo Redman is of the Lord. Nothing that I do in myself can be done and say, oh, well, that's good. You can't even look and say, oh, well, Pastor Bo, he's a good guy. No, I'm not. But the God that lives within me has changed me. Amen. He has changed me. Something must be done that a human that we cannot do for ourselves. Turning over a new leaf does not help. How many times have I said you turn over a dead leaf, she's still dead on the other side. Doesn't get any better. For this reason, some of the greatest accounts of the Bible involve testimonies of people who have a life-changing, soul-saving experience through the power of God. Think about Abraham's call. Think about Ruth's conversion, the disciples' uh, commission. Think about the Ethiopian eunuch's confession. Those things, when we read them, Brother Matt, should excite the Christian. We start seeing those things. Those, those should excite the Christian. It should thrill our souls to know that what God did then, He's still doing today. And if God could save them then, He can still save today. I don't want to hear, but you don't know where I've been. Again, God does. And He still wants to save you. Amen. Because here's the beauty of it. For God so loved the world, not just the good, because there ain't none. He so loved the world. You say, but you, you don't, 
I, I've never, I'm part of this world, but you don't know what I've done. Listen, guys, I, I, I want you to understand because I see the looks on your faces when I say it. God can clear all of that out. Amen. And He wants to. What does it take? Faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works. But I think I gotta hand out enough tracts. I gotta tell enough people. I gotta do this, gotta do that. No, you ain't gotta do none of it. You get saved, you're gonna want to, but you ain't got to. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You know why I can't get into heaven on my own, Brother Reggie? Because I'd get up there and I wouldn't say nothing about Jesus. I'd say, look what I did. Look how many tracts I handed out. Look how much money I gave. Look how many people I, I witnessed to. Listen, we get to heaven, y'all. We talked about it this morning. Get with Miss Shelby. What heaven's going to be like, it's going to be all rejoicing. Yeah. It's going to be all worshiping. Yeah. It's going to be all about Him. There ain't a bit of it going to be about us. Amen? Right. Amen. Let's get started this morning. You're like, you ain't, I, ain't even got, I ain't got preaching yet. Y'all calm down. Y'all, y'all won't get me riled up now. <laughs> let's look. Let's look at her first point this morning. This lady here, she was deformed. Deformed. Now, before you let your mind run to a physical deformity, that's not what I'm talking about. Spiritually, she was deformed. Right. She had no possible way of getting talking to the Lord outside of being told. No possible way until she was willing to repent. I don't mean this morning, like I said, that she, but she was morally deformed. So were we all until we accepted God's amazing grace. Amen. So was I until... Now one night as a 21-year-old boy, I slept outside of my bed sometime around midnight. And I said, God, I can't take this no more. I don't know what you're doing. I've been around church my whole life. I was still just as wicked as a rattlesnake. I was just, just as mean as you'd ever want to be. But I slid outside bed. I said, I can't do this anymore. Lord, save me. I didn't say, Lord, forgive me for X, Y, and Z. I'd have still been kneeling down beside that bed confessing of things that I had done. Amen. I said, Lord, save me. I don't know everything I said that night, but I do know it consisted of faith. I believe what he said he would do. If I did what he said I should do, if any man shall call, right? Yeah. Whosoever yeah. shall call upon the name of the Lord yeah. shall be shall saved. Be. Shall be saved. If you call, I promise you in faith, if you call, he will save you. Yes, sir. Thank God. You see, Rahab was a prostitute there in Jericho. Her life was an ungodly one. But I want you to notice, when dealing with lost folk, you're dealing with two different types most of the time. This poor lady here, she was down and out. Have you ever known anybody that's just down and out? I mean, she had, she had had a rough road that she had been. She'd been. She'd been down a rough road in her life, and she was down and out. We might consider Rahab being this type of person. Uh, someone who's living in the dregs of society, someone who's living in sin. And a good example in modern life is, is someone who has walked their life into sin. Someone who has walked into addiction. Someone who has walked into um, a, a life of promiscuity such as Rahab. Someone who has lived their life in such a way of drugs and alcohol that they have the control over their life. I, I, I don't find it humorous in the way that you would think, uh, like laughing, but I find it odd that when people say, ain't nothing going to have control over my life, but yet they allow drugs, alcohol, the world to have control over their life. You know, there's a reason why alcohol is called spirits. You're going to be controlled by that spirit or the Holy Spirit, one or the other. Those people that are down and out, that's what we're looking at Rahab here. She, she was like that. Think of all the people that you have known that made the decision to run headlong into sin. 
to run headlong into it. And now the destruction that has came to their life or the destruction you see them sitting in now or you, the destruction that's just on the horizon that we try to warn them of. We try to say, listen, stop, stop. Just as we would if somebody's walking out in the road, we'd yell at them, stop. We see these people going into it, Brother Peter, and you want to just shake them. You want to say, listen. But if God can't change them, I can't change them. That's exactly right. Brother Matt, how I wish I could. How many times have I said, if Brother Mike, if I could, I'd take five, six of us, go down here to the Whiting store, and every man, woman, child that walked in there, we'd tackle them in the parking lot. Yeah. We'd tackle them, we'd hold them down, and we'd make them get saved. It don't work that way. No. It's a personal relationship. It's a relationship they have to have with Christ. Rahab here, she was down and out. Rahab was deformed in her society, by her society rather, and by her character. So you got the down and out, but also how about the up and out? How about those that, that may be someone who's done well for themselves? Someone who uh, isn't... Uh, living paycheck to paycheck, if you will. Somebody who uh, doesn't uh, have to really worry about things too much. Somebody who's got every toy that they've ever wanted. Somebody who's got uh, goes all over the place and uh, vacations all the time. And I, nothing's wrong with these things. Nothing's wrong with having those things. Don't get me wrong. But the up and out is the person who has these things but don't have Christ. This type of person is often highly educated, financially doing well, considers themselves above their need for the Lord. We can find in our society these well-to-do people that feel like they have need of nothing physically. I've got all I wanted. I've got the newest, I got the newest sled every year. I, I, I get a new bass boat whenever I want it. If I want a Harley, I'm going to go get it and I'm going to ride. If I want a new boat, I'm going to go get that. If I want this, I'm going to go get it. Anything that I want, I can go get. But let me ask you a question this morning. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall it profit a man? Now listen, please don't get it twisted this morning to think that if God has blessed you in business, that I don't like you. Praise the Lord, God's blessed you. I know, I know several people that God has blessed in business. There, I, 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 I know many people that will, that God has saved and uses them and they, their children and grandchildren and great grandchildren probably will never have to worry about money. I'm not mad at them for that at all. Those people, brother Mike Brown, have this mentality. I've got money. The ones I'm talking about have the mentality of money's got me. That's those that are up and out. That's those that think, oh, well, I don't need anything because I've got everything. Listen, no, friend, I don't care how much you got in the bank. I don't care how many toys you got sitting in your driveway. I don't care none of that stuff. If you don't have Christ, you are broke. Yes, Amen. Amen. No matter whether you're like Rahab, the sense of being down and out, or you feel like you're in the up and out crowd, you need Christ. Amen. She's deformed spiritually. But notice what happens next. She was informed. For the deformed person to come to salvation, that person must hear and must be informed about the salvation of the Lord. How did Rahab come to know about the Lord's salvation? She was convicted. But what was she convicted by? The works of God. Notice, we saw in our text how Rahab was informed about the coming judgment and the grace of God that she could experience. She heard about the things God had done for His people. People need to know what the Lord is doing before they'll ever put their faith in Him. Amen. You know where does that come in, Brother Peter? A personal testimony. of Let me tell you what God did for me. 
You know some of my favorite testimonies? Not the ones that talk about the huge amount of sin that they were in. Nothing of that nature. I love those testimonies that God saved somebody off of a church pew. Or saved them off of a, saved them, well, I'm never really deep into sin. I never, nothing ever touched my lips that shouldn't have touched it. I, I wasn't an adulterer. I wasn't, a, you know, promiscuous. I wasn't, I wasn't an alcoholic. I wasn't, a, you know, a drug addict. I wasn't none of those things. I just knew that I was lost. Yeah. I love those. Amen. But you know what I also love? Those testimonies of people that said, I was a drunk and God reached down and saved me. I was a drug addict. God reached down and saved me. I was a womanizer and God reached down and saved me. You know what? Those testimonies are just as good. Absolutely. And He can do it for you. He can do it for you. Matter of fact, He wants to. No, no, the song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Where are we to tell it? Over the hills and everywhere, right? Y'all did better than me. I can't say everywhere without saying everywhere. <laughs> Amen. But we're to tell it over the hills and everywhere. Not just whoever comes to our house. Not just while we're at church. But Brother Mike Brown, over the hills, everywhere, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Amen. The Lord can convict the lost by the lifestyle of the saved. Yes, he does. Amen. Think about that one. I've seen people get saved in testimony services. Pastor, never get to preach. Pastor, just stand up here and call on people. Yep, go ahead. Yep, testify. Oh, praise the Lord. Testify. Yep, go right ahead. And then folk come to the altar and get gloriously born again. Why? Because the testimony of a saint is a powerful thing. Yeah. Very powerful. What does it do? It convicts people by the works of God. If God can do it for you, then God can do it for them. Amen. She was not only convicted by the works of God, but she is convicted by the witnesses of God. That last point leads into this sub-point. She needed more than just second-hand accounts. She needed a personal testimony. The two spies allowed that testimony to come to her. The Holy Spirit searched the city of Jericho. Notice this. And the Holy Spirit picked her out. Mm-hmm. Amen. How many people in this community do you think the Holy Spirit is sitting down with this morning? Dealing with that heart. Mm-hmm. How many of your friends this morning do you think God is dealing with? The Holy Spirit of God is dealing with them with? How many people in this place right now do you believe God is dealing with their hearts? Softening that heart to hear the Word of God. And all they need somebody to come by and talk to them. God's been dealing with hearts and all you need is somebody to tell you about what Jesus did for them. I've told you this morning where Christ brought me from. I'm not going to give you all the sin because I ain't giving Satan any kind of glory. But what I can tell you this morning is by the grace of God. He cleansed me. Amen. Amen. So by the witnesses, God led the spies to the woman who was ready to hear the gospel. All over Washington County, the Spirit of God's working. Y'all realize right now, everywhere we go, the Spirit of God is dealing with somebody. Amen. So I don't believe that. Well, stay in your own little fantasy land. (laughs) Amen. Look at the Ethiopian eunuch who was lost. Look at Cornelius who was lost. God sent Philip to the Ethiopian eunuch. He sent Peter to Cornelius. He sent Jesus to the woman at the well. He can send you to the lady across the street. He can send you to somebody else at the store. He can send us to these people. We just have to be willing. God is not only convicting the lost, He is looking for some Christians who are so sensitive to Him that will go. Amen. She had seen the work of God in the lives of the people and she was convinced. She was also convicted by the Word of God. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God? Amen. What Rahab received was the Word of God. In the book of James, if you were to look in the book of James, chapter number 2, in the account that's talking of this, the book of James uh, mentions the visiting Jericho. The men visiting Jericho were messengers. That's the word used in chapter 2, messengers. They were spokesmen for God. 
What do you think you are when you leave here? You're a spokesman for the Lord. That's why it's important how we live. That's why it's important what we say. They were speaking God's message. You see, real faith is taking God at His word. At His word. Faith is your response to the word of God. Ask yourself this this morning. I want you to be, I want you to be more serious with yourself right now than you've ever been. If you're sitting here and lost this morning. I want you to think about this. What else are you looking for? Honestly answer that in your own. What else are you looking for? You have been given truth. The grace of God continues to deal with you. What more are you wanting from God? What else does He need to do? All, he's already sent His Son to die for you. What else does He need to do? There's nothing I can do. It's the answer you have to answer. You have to ask yourself this. What else? What is it going to take? That answer should scare you to death. Because God very well may start taking things from you to get your attention. Now that's not, I'm not trying to scare you. If I could scare you to salvation, I would have done it months ago. But Brother Mike Brown, God wants to save folk. It's not His will that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What's it going to take? Lastly, she went from being deformed to informed, which finally led to her being transformed. In James, we are also told that Rahab was justified. Amen. Rahab believed the she had believed the message given to her by God's servant. She was justified by faith. She didn't do anything. It's not that she hid those guys. She had faith. That's what saved her. Wasn't her works. She was gloriously transformed because of the faith, her faith in God. And that faith produced an action. Let me say this and we'll be finished up here. By her faith, by her transformation, a present danger was alleviated. The present danger was alleviated. Judgment was merely days ahead for Jericho. Just right on the horizon. Everyone living there in Jericho was going to die. Everyone except for the woman and those in whom she witnessed to, those of her house. She missed death and hell by a mere span of days. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Miss Suzanne, I have no clue. Brother Kenny, I might live another 50 years. I'd be an old geezer then, buddy. But if I did... I don't know what tomorrow holds. I'm living my life, Brother Matt, for the Lord, as if He'll show up in five minutes. Good. You say, well, what if He don't come back in my lifetime? I'd still rather serve Him. Right. You ask me that question, what if He don't come back in my lifetime? Okay, great. What if He came back five minutes ago? Brother Peter, where would we be? I can promise you this, if he had come back five minutes ago, I wouldn't still be standing here. And there's many sitting out here that would have been gone. And if you don't like what I preach, when I'm gone, you can take over. I didn't let women up here then. Y'all women come on and preach. <laughs> Amen. But I pray that nobody in this room would be left behind. If Jesus did come back five minutes ago, would you be sitting here by yourself? That's good, sir. Would you be sitting here wondering, oh my goodness, what happened? Brother Swope, I don't know if there's going to be a sound. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I do know in the twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. right. We'll be gone. Mm -hmm. We'll call it up together. Mm -hmm. I'd hate to know I was left behind because of my pride. Because I didn't feel like God could do it. Listen, 
don't 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 try to understand it. Right. Cuz I'm going to tell you you'll never understand it. I don't understand. It's a miracle of God. I don't understand why, Brother Matt, he loved me enough that he'd send his son to die Amen. for me. I have no idea why Jesus would love me so much that he would take the lashings, he would take the beating, he would take the mockery, the spitting on. I don't understand it, Brother Michael Swope, but I do know and I'm thankful for it. Amen. Brother Tom, I'm, I'm thankful this morning that he loved me enough that now I don't have to face the judgment. Amen. We don't know how near we are to that judgment. Let me tell you what was great about her salvation. It was an eternal redemption. It was not just get her off of that wall that she was about because she was about to fall. It was not get her out of sin, but it was about get her into the kingdom. And it can be yours as well. Secure your home this morning. The forgiveness of your sin. The past deeds. The present danger was alleviated. The past deeds were eliminated. Her sins were gone. Ah, hallelujah. She was forgiven. Not because she had turned over a new leaf, but because she had accepted God's grace in her life. I'm not asking you this morning to join the church. I'm not. I'm not asking you to become a Baptist. What I'm asking you this morning is search your heart. Become a Christian. And I promise you, you've not been one your whole life. No. You haven't. So you don't become a Christian until you get saved. Jesus told Nicodemus, he says, Marvin, not I say unto thee, you must be born again. You must be born again this morning. No, you're not good enough. I'm not good enough. Nobody in this room is good enough. But her past deeds were eliminated. She had trusted what God said and what God did and what God promised to do for her. The last point I want you to look at this morning will be the positive direction was initiated. So we see the present danger was alleviated, the past deeds were eliminated, and the positive direction was initiated. Her life was turned around suddenly. And she became a blessing. She became a blessing to those of faith. She blessed the people of God, the spies. She was able to be a blessing to them. The entire camp of Israel, she became a blessing to those of her family. Her faith, by her faith, telling others they were all saved through this. None of them faced death. All of that one section of the wall where that scarlet cord was sticking out was saved. Amen. She's a blessing to her family. I could preach there for the next 10 days. Amen. Is your faith leading your family? Or is your lack of faith destroying your family? That hurts a little bit, don't it? Yeah. Amen. She blessed her family and they too were saved. My wife was sitting in service 2007. My wife was sitting in service with me and Gabby Jo. Gabby Jo wasn't even two years old yet. She was still one year old. She would several months away from being two. And my pastor, Michael Poindexter, stood up there and preached one morning. I can't remember the name of the message. I have no idea what all he preached, but he said a phrase. He said, if you, he stood right in front of her like this here, as we said on the second row. He stood right in front of her and said, if you could, it's not possible that you can, but if you could give to your daughter what you call your salvation, would she go to heaven? She couldn't answer that in the affirmative. There was no way. She knew she was lost. Why is it that we're okay with hanging on to it for ourselves, but we're not willing, we don't have enough confidence in it 
to give it to our children and say, they'll make it. We all want better for our kids, do we not? We all want better for them. How about giving them the greatest gift? Teaching them about Jesus. Amen. And knowing without a shadow of a doubt that they'll see mama and daddy in heaven. See, I've asked my children, if something was to happen to me, do you know that you'll see me again? They both testify and have a testimony of salvation. And they say, yeah, dad, we know we'll see you again. Because not only do we have salvation, but we trust in what you say, that you've been saved. I don't know anybody's salvation in this room but mine. I can't tell you if Brother Mike's saved. I can't tell you if Brother Reggie's saved. I can't even tell you if my wife is saved. I can't. Why? Because it's a personal relationship. But I can tell you by the lives of many sitting in here that I believe they're saved. Amen. I want to become a blessing to my family. I promise you this morning, if you're lost, you're no blessing to them when it comes to spiritual matters. She was also a blessing to all those that followed. What do you mean by that? She blessed those who followed. She was the ancestor of, of Jesus. She was in the family line of Boaz and Ruth. She was the great-grandmother, as I said earlier, of King David. You see, while Jericho was headed towards judgment, Rahab was headed towards a wedding. <laughs> I'd much rather be heading to the wedding. Amen. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Then I would to destruction. This morning, you're headed to one of the two. You're heading to one of the two. You're heading, looking forward to the coming of Christ. Or you're heading into destruction. Think about where this world's headed, the direction of this country and the world. It's in a, in a, in a, in a crazy direction, heading towards destruction. God's offering you an escape this morning. Oh, yeah. He is. The choice is yours what you'll do with it. Before Rahab heard the message of God, she was caught up in fate, her, fate, her false religion of the Ammonite faith. That's where she was. She was caught up in that. But that faith didn't help her. She was lost. She had a false religion, just as many in our world today. You can say, I don't believe in nothing. You're caught up in your own religion. You think you're good enough. You think you can make it. You think I can do this. Listen, I... I I'm from, I'm from North Carolina. Good old boys, good old girls. Independent to the core. And God sends me to down East Maine where everybody else is independent to the core. <laughs> Amen. I can do it myself. <laughs> this is something you can't do by yourself. Amen. If it was physical, I'd say let's get it. Yep. Amen. But we wrestle not. Mm -hmm. Right? Everything we wrestle now, is spiritual. Brother Mike Brown, if it was just hauling a couple cord of wood across the yard, let's get it done. I can do that myself. Even if I pass out, I'm going to do it myself because I'm going to prove a point. Miss Betty's back there like, I'll still do it at 93. Don't test me. Ain't that right, Miss Betty? She said, I'll do it. We're independent. But you can't be saved until you get dependent on Him. Amen? Heads about eyes closed this morning.